So we've just talked about lines. We're going to be a little bit more general. Today we're going to talk about section 0 0.2. We're going to talk about functions. Now here's the deal. Anytime you have such as uh, one variable depending on another one, such as like y depends on x for, for most of our functions, where y is dictated by what you, you put in for x, uh, some independent variable x and some dependent variable y, we can call that a function. The only thing that you really need to have for a function is that every input has one output, not two outputs. Other, otherwise, you don't have a function because you plug in a number and you don't, wouldn't know where to go. So when we say a function, we mean some expression where each input determines exactly one unique output. Usually for inputs, we, we see those are like x's. So typically that's uh, an x. So some expression where each input x has exactly one unique, unique means doesn't happen again, one unique output. typically call those y's for, or f of x um, for, for us. You know, we can represent functions a lot of ways, though. We can represent with tables, graphs, formulas. Uh, one, one time I was fishing, and I, I caught four fish. And because I'm a math dork, I, I made a table, table of it. Because you, you don't do that? Is that not normal? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, here's one example of, of a function, a very easy function. Here's my fishes. I think that's, that's fish. Uh, fish caught and the number of pounds that they were. So my first fish, second fish, third fish, I caught four that day. First one was 3.2 pounds. Ah, not, not bad. Next was 1.4, then 2.8, and then I caught a massive bass for 7.3. That was a good day. Good day. Good day. Threw them all back. Okay. <laughs> Threw them all back. Firstly, let's define what the, the inputs and outputs are for this particular, well, this would, we're going to see if it's a function in just a second. Firstly, my, my inputs are, well, the, the fish that I caught in this instance. The outputs would be, well, their weights when I weighed them, because the scale would be like my function, right? I'd put my first fish on there, it'd give me a weight. Put my second fish on there, it'd give me a weight. Uh, now, the question is, is it a function? Is it a function? Does each input, does each fish have one specific weight? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? I need to erase something right here. One, exactly one, not unique, but one output. Uh, unique output would be a one-to-one -one function. We're not there yet. So when we say it has one output, I mean that, that I don't have fish number one weighed 3.2 pounds and 4.7 pounds. Because you'd say, how much did your first fish weigh? I'd say 3.8 or 3.2 or 4.7. Would that make sense to you? Well, no, seriously, how much did your fish weigh? Uh, 3.2 or 4.7? And you're like, that doesn't make any sense. You're giving me two weights for the same fish. Does that make sense to you? Would that make sense if, I, if you asked me that question, how much did your first fish weigh? And I said, oh, well, either 3.2 or 4.7. You said, well, aren't we talking about your first fish? Yes, we are. 3.2 or 4.7. You're like, well, if I'm having dinner with you tonight, I need to know if I'm going to be hungry at 3.2 pounds or if I'm going to be satisfied at 4.7. I go 3.2 or 4.7. That doesn't make any sense, right? You have to give, I have to give you a specific weight for that one fish. That's what a function does. It says if you say fish number one, you're talking about one specific weight, okay? Uh, maybe I should say the word specific output, not, not unique, because one unique output, we will be talking about one to one in just a little bit. How about number two? Does number two give me, give me out just one weight? Yeah, it doesn't say 1.4 and then something else over here. That would not be a function. So this thing is a function. Any, any fish that I have, it has one specific weight that we're talking about. If I did this, Would it still be a function? Yeah. The answer is yeah. Yeah, it would be a function. This, weigh, this fish four weighed 3.2 pounds, not something else. It doesn't matter that these things are the same. That can happen. Uh, let me give you a few instance as far as a graph goes. That right there 
has the same output at, a, at a, several different spots, right? That, that would be some sort of an x squared. It says if I'm at this point or this point, I still have the same exact output. That, that's okay. This is still a function. We're going to talk about vertical line tests too. It, it's a function. Uh, it wouldn't be a one-to-one -one function. It wouldn't pass a horizontal line test, but it would be a function. We can also talk about functions. Really, we don't see fish caught normally. We see some sort of function like this, especially if you're doing any mathematical modeling, you might see this, where you have a set of inputs, our x's, you got a set of output, outputs. That thing would be a function. Every one of our inputs or x's has one output. How you would say that it wouldn't be a function if you came back and did something like this. Would that be a function? Yeah. No. No, if your inputs are repeated with different outputs, well, then you don't have a function there. So that would be a no bueno. So sometimes we actually have formulas, too, that are, are functions. Uh, this is a function. What is that, by the way? Areas. Sure, and, and it's a function because if you give me a radius, it's going to give me out one area, isn't it? So our area depends on the radius that you have for your circle. It's not like I say, you have a radius of three, what's your area? And you give me two different answers. That wouldn't make any sense. It wouldn't be a function. Uh, the formula would fail. Also, we can have some graphs. Graphically, if we did something like that, we can, have, we can represent them lots of different ways. Basic tables here, formulas, which we spend most of our time in formulas and graphs. That's another way we represent functions. Um, just one, one note, functions have to have only one output for each input. That, that's the key thing. I, I hope that you got that from, from this. Now, one more thing about this one. Let's say we change it just a bit. And we say y equals f of x. Could you find f of 0? What would that mean to do? The mean, if y is f of x, it says y is a function of x, and I'm asking for f of 0, can you tell me what is f of 0 in this case? It, okay, it is how much? Two. Two, because it says you go over to the input of 0, you look up the output for that particular input. So here it says find your input, remember this is f of x, right? So go to your x, go to 0, tell me what the output is, oh, it's 2. How about f of... Three. What's f of three, everybody? Nine. That wasn't everybody. I'll well, take it. Mm -hmm. right, yeah, it just says you go to your input of three, you find out what that output was. Typically, we'll use this in this type of situation where you have some sort of equation y equals 3x squared minus 4x plus 2. The y equals thing isn't always the best for us to represent a function. The reason is, it's because in this class we're going to look at a lot of different functions at once, and you want to be able to distinguish between them. If I have just y equals a function, then y equals another function, y equals another function, and I say, look at the function y, you're going to be like, there, there's three of them, which one are you talking about? We of, often use this type of notation to distinguish between them. So if I said, instead of y equals f of x, I'm sorry, y equals that function, I want f of x, or g of x, or h of x. That way we can distinguish, distinguish between those graphs and those formulas um, and these equations. Also what it lets us do is if I ask you to plug in a number, it will tell you inherently what number you plugged in. For instance, if I say uh, for you here, can you find me f of 0, well, wh what does f of 0 do? What's that supposed to do for you? Oh, so what's to plug in, okay, so what's to plug in 0 and find out what the output is. Can you plug in 0 here? Yeah, 2. Okay, so, you said 2? Okay, so you plug in 0, 0, yeah, you get the 2. What's nice about this is if you plug in 2 from this one, well, you're going to get y equals 2. But does this tell you what you plugged in to get the 2? No. No. Does this one tell you what you plugged in to get the 2? Yes. Yeah, this actually will give you a, a, a coordinate point. It will say you plugged in 0, you got out 2. And that's kind of nice. This is one other reason why we use that function notation. Let's go back to those graphs, too. Uh, can you tell what is a function just by looking at the graph? So, for instance,
for instance, can you tell me whether these things are functions or not just by looking at them? We know we can tell with the tables, right? Because if we have an input repeated with a different output, well, that says it right there. We're going to be able to tell formulaically in just a little bit. But right here, just by graphically, what, what's that thing called where you test a line to see whether or not it is a, a function or not? Vertical line test. Yeah, we have a vertical line test. So imagine, <laughs> bless you, wow, that was a powerful one. It was like a sneeze grenade going off. Um, sneeze grenade? That would be so gross. <laughs> so disgusting. That's where my mind is right now. Okay, so if you imagine every vertical line, it's supposed to touch your graph at only one spot, if it touches at all. So is this thing a function? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Every vertical line hits this diagonal at only one spot. So yeah, this is a function. How about that one? Is that a function? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, parabolas are basic, are basic functions. <coughs> Every vertical line hits this. Is it a one-to-one -one function? Do you know that? No. One-to-one -one function would be the horizontal line test saying that every input has one unique output that says it doesn't happen again. This is not one-to-one, -one, but it is certainly a function. How about this one? Is this a function? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. Now, what about this is an interesting case. What about this one? Is this a function? Does every vertical line hit the graph at it most once? Yeah. yeah. Now, a couple of people get hung up because, like, wait a second, <coughs> don't you have to have something at this point zero? And the answer is no. Not every input has to have an output, but if it does, it only happens once. Do you see the difference there? This doesn't have an output, it's undefined at zero. This would be like 1 over x. Uh, but if it is defined, then that definition has to be one exact point to be a function. So yeah, this is still a function. How about this one? No, this fails it. Because if you plug in this point, you actually get one, two, three points out. We can't deal with that. So this is not a function. So vertical line test verbally, I'm not going to write it down because I know you all, you all know it, says that you imagine every possible vertical line, uh, that vertical lines have to touch every point of that graph at most one spot. So touch the graph at most one spot. It can't ever cross over more than one spot vertically. How many people feel okay with our very quick introduction to functions so far? You having fun yet? Enjoy. Enjoy, enjoy. Okay. Well, let's consider one more thing. What is that? Circle. Say it louder. Circle. Circle. Did you all know it was a circle? Did you read the section on circles like I told you to? I did read, said read circles, right? Mm -hmm. Did you read circles? Mm -hmm. Hopefully you read circles. <coughs> That's a circle. What's it centered at? Origin, zero. Centered at the origin. Very good. Zero, zero. The way you shift circles around, hopefully you remember this from your intermediate algebra days, is you have some parentheses in here, like